today's going to be a short lesson, and we're going to talk about what we see in the picture to the right, explain how it would be used in the clinic, and how does that differ from a plain parallel chamber. So what is seen in the picture, this is a extrapolation chamber. So we don't see this as often in a clinic, but it's still important to know you often see it in con or other medical physics textbooks. So just knowing the picture, know what one looks like and in brief what it does and how it does it is beneficial. So explain how we'd use it in the clinic. So first and foremost, the big thing is that it measures surface dose. That's its big claim to fame. That is why it was designed and how it works. So the beam enters a thin foil window and that is carbon coated, which makes the upper electrode. That collecting electrode is a coin shaped and it's surrounded by a guard ring. The electrode spacing can be varied, which makes it unique and really allows you to measure different energies because the electrons are going to travel in different depths. So since you can adjust the electrode spacing, you're able to find the surface dose and specifically the ionization per volume. You can then take that and determine the dose by extrapolating the ionization curves to zero electrode spa uh, spacing. And ultimately uh, that can, as like I said, be used for surface dose for electrons and betas. So you don't probably need to know the real details of how to do it. What I said right there is probably good to go. If you look in con and some other medical physics, it may go a bit deeper into detail. Certainly give those a read and just know mainly what this is used for, what it looks like. And then how does this differ from a plane parallel chamber? So somewhat of a side note is that a plane parallel and a parallel plate chamber are the same. I've seen them called both things, and it's important not to get thrown off if your examiner says plane parallel, even though me personally, I've always called it a parallel plate chamber. So these are similar to a, a extrapolation chamber, but the difference is that their volume is fixed. Whereas I mentioned for an extrapolation chamber, that is not, you can alter the spacing the electrode spacing for the extrapolation chambers. So the plane parallel or parallel plate are typically two millimeters apart, the electrodes that is. And so you have to add layers of phantom material to experience depth, which is what we're used to in the clinic. But it's nice, nice with an extrapolation chamber, you can do that without adding any type of phantom material. Also for plane parallels, you can do shallow depths and then cavity chambers uh, because those are in fact too big or for, I guess what I should say is the cavity chambers that we're used to, farmer chambers and things of that nature, they are too big to use in the shallow depths. So that is why these plane parallel chambers come in handy. So quick lesson today, if you have any questions about that, very simple topic, don't spend too much time on it, but just kind of a side note, good to know. You never know what they're going to throw at you in the devices category. This may be one of them, and this may be able just to be enough to get you by. If you have any comments or questions, please post below. Thanks for watching. Good luck studying.